Hello and welcome to Let's Code an Indie Game episode 37. This is the series where we learn the tools and techniques needed to get started with indie game development. In this episode we're going to continue working on our pause menu. Let's get started. So let's remind ourselves where we got up to. If we now hit escape we pause the game and we have this uh, currently pretty useless menu. It gives us three options and we can move up and down but we can't do anything with those options so in this episode we're going to get to the point where we can actually choose the options and make them do something. Okay so the first thing we're going to do is change our definition of what an option is slightly so if we go down to menu.create where we actually create um, our menu we can see that we pass in this options argument which is currently a list of the options we would like to appear in our menu and if we take a look at our pause state where we currently create our menu here we go um, we can see if we just pass in one two three we're going to change our options uh, table or our options argument to be a table which acts like a map instead of a list what this means um, is that the items or the entries in our list will have keys as well as values and we'll be able to pull things out by those keys so in order to make it slightly easier because working with tables can be um, it can get a little annoying to remember what all the keys are we're going to add a helper function to our menu class and we're going to create this function um, on the menu object rather than on the instance so it will be a if you're used to Java it would be a static method um, for us I guess we'll just call it a class method so we'll create a method called menu.createOption and this will take a two arguments it will take um, a piece of text and a function to run when that option or piece of text is selected and we'll call that on select and this is simply going to return a table acting as a map uh, so it will have a text key which will be equal to the value of text and an on select key which will be equal to the value of on select now this um, might seem like it doesn't do very much but it will actually make our code look quite a bit neater because now if we go into pause state where our menu is defined um, we're going to change it to be a list of options rather than a list of words. So we'll say menu.create option. And our two options for this menu are going to be continue, which will let the player continue with the game. Um, so our second argument here needs to be a function. Uh, and I'll just pass in a function which does nothing to start with. And our second option is going to be exit. And this is going to be a function which will eventually, or an option which will let the player exit the game. And again, we'll just pass in um, a function which does nothing. So if we run our game at the moment, it will break. Oh, it won't break. That's very interesting. It won't break, but it won't display anything. And that's because we've changed the way our options list works. So let's go in and update our menu. Um, update our menu to use our new options list. So when we draw the menu we still pass in self.options, we pass the option into draw selected option or draw option, both of them use draw option and here we're going to say option text and this will pull the text value back out of our option. There we go, now we have continue and exit. So the next thing to do is actually use the onSelect function when something is selected. And to do that, just like next and previous, we'll create another function called confirm. And what this will do is when a menu item is uh, confirmed by the player pressing enter, um, we'll actually call the onSelect function. So what we'll do is say local uh, current option is going to be self.options and it will be whichever option is at the selected position so self.selected and then we can just say current option 
pull out the value of the on select key uh, from this uh, or from the create menu map down here and uh, execute it. And this will run whichever function is associated with uh, the text value which has been selected. And for continue, currently all we have to do is call um, where are we? game controller dot get to get our game controller, and we'll pop off the pause state. Uh, we covered states um, in a couple of episodes ago. I think it was two episodes ago. So go back and check it out if you're not sure what pop and push state are doing. Um, but this should get rid of our pause menu, or get rid of our pause state and put us back in the game state. So let's um, see. Ah, we need to wire up our function as well or it won't do anything. So let's do that too. Oops. There we go. So... We'll add confirm to the menu instances. Uh, instance dot confirm equals confirm, and also in our pause state, we'll say if key equals enter. Sorry, it's not enter; it's return in uh, Love Two D. If key equals return, then self dot menu um, confirm. So now our continue option should actually work. Oop. Attempt to index local self a new value from game controller line eight. So game controller. Yep. Easy mistake. Uh, this should have been a colon because um, pop state is an instance method. Okay, and now our continue option works, but our exit option doesn't do anything. So let's update um, exit to do something as well. And for this, we'll go into our game controller and we'll add a new method called exit for exiting our game. And to exit the game, um, all we have to do is call love.event quit. And we can pass in an exit status, and an exit status of zero meant that everything went OK. In fact, let's just say local OK equals zero, and then we can say quit OK. And the reason I've pulled this method into game controller is because later on we probably want to do a little bit of tidy up of ourselves before we exit the game. So we don't just want to call love.event.quit, we want to call gamecontroller.exit. So now inside of our pause state, on our function, or on our exit function, we want to say gamecontroller.get, and we'll just call exit, and I'll just check I added exit to the instance of the game controller as well. Instance dot exit equals exit. So now if we choose exit, we exit the game. So that's um, that's pretty good. We've got our menus working, but we want to go deeper. We want to be able to have menus which create menus. Um, and this is so we can do things like asking the player, are they sure if they hit exit in case they hit exit by accident? So the way we're going to do that is just like we use a stack to control our game states, we're going to use a stack to control our menus. So let's start by adding a new folder in Logic and we'll call this uh, Menus. Where are we? New folder, Menus. And we'll actually move our current menu class inside of Menus just to keep things nice and tidy. So this means in pause state, we just need to change where we're importing menu from or requiring menu from. Let's just check it still works. It does. And now inside of menus, let's add a new class. And we'll call this menu stack. And this class will be responsible for controlling uh, which menu is at or which menu the player gets to interact with if we have more than one menu on the screen. 
So let's do a bit of boilerplate. So that will give us um, a Lua file which will work like a very basic class. And then we need to think about the methods uh, we want our menu stack to have. So in this case, we want our menu stack to have um, pop menu, push menu, and these will work just like our game states. So push will add a new menu and pop will remove the menu at the top of the stack. So pop menu, push menu, we'll also ask our menu stack to take care of the drawing because it has all of our menus and we'll also ask it to take care of the key presses so that the right menu gets the right key press. And um, again, like with a lot of code, this will become a bit more obvious as we write it. And finally, we actually need a stack, so let's... Uh, create an empty table called menus to hold all of our menus. And now we can just create our methods. So pop menu is just going to take self. And just like our game state, it will um, remove, all right, we'll use table.remove to remove the menu at the end of the list. Uh, so we need to get the length of our list. Then when we push a new menu onto our stack, we'll use table.insert to add a new menu to the, or, yeah, to add a new menu to the end of our list. So when we pop, we remove from the end of our list. When we push, we add onto the end of the list. And this means that it's always the end of the list we're operating on, and the end of the list is the top of our, or is the top of our stack. So we need a menu to push. Um, there we go. And for key pressed. What we'll do is get our current menu. So we'll also pass in the key value here. We'll get our current menu, so local current menu. And this is going to be the menu at the end of our list. So we'll say self.menus. And we want to get the menu um, at the index, which is the same as the length of our list. And then we'll say if key equals up, then current menu uh, previous will be up. And, and this is exactly what we do in our pause state. So we're moving all of this logic here. So I'm just going to, at this point, I'm just going to take it from our pause state and drop it into our menu stack. And the reason we're doing this, or one of the reasons we're doing this, is because it will make more sense to our player if all of our menus work in the same way. So we can just replace all of these with current menu. Uh, so yeah, we want all of our menus to follow the same sort of up, down, return pattern for uh, selecting things. So there's key pressed, and finally draw. So this will need a view. And for this, we'll just loop through all of our menus. So 4m in, or 4 underscore m in ipairs self.menus. So that will give us an iterator. We'll iterate through all of our menus, and we'll just call draw and pass in the view. Okay, that's quite a bit of code, so let's uh, see if it works. So inside of our pause state, 
we'll grab our menu stack from source logic menus menu stack. Oops. So zoom back in a bit. And we'll say menu stack equals menu stack dot create. And then instead of doing instance dot menu, we'll do instance menu stack uh, push menu and we'll push this menu onto our stack. So our main pause menu now gets pushed onto our stack and rather than calling self.menu.draw we can just call self.menu.stack.draw and inside of keypressed we need to now call self.menu.stack.keypressed and pass in the key and we'll still keep if key equals escape um, exit the pause menu as well um, that feels like it makes sense for now so we'll keep it there okay let's see if this works it does, and the exit function still works as well. Uh, let's just check continue. Yep. Okay, so why did we uh, make all of those changes and create the menu stack? Well, what this lets us do is inside of our exit option, rather than exiting the game straight away, we can actually say instance menu stack push menu and here we can create a new menu so menu.create and we'll add two options to this menu um, I'll just oops. there we go tidy things up a bit our first option we'll say menu create option um, will be no oops. and if the player selects no, then we just want a function which calls instance menu stack pop menu. And our next option um, yes. And this is now going to call uh, exit game for us. So game controller dot get exit. So now if we open our menu and choose exit, we get a new menu with no and yes. And if we say no, we go back to our previous menu. And if we say yes, we exit the game. Uh, now, of course, these menus are on top of each other, so the next thing to do is make our menu uh, take some extra arguments for the X and Y location of the menu. So inside of menu create, we'll add values for X and Y, and we'll say self.x equals X, and instance.y equals Y, or instance.x equals X, instance.y equals Y. Then when we draw our menu, we'll just pass in x and y values to draw selected, so self.x and self.y, and draw option, self.x, self.y, and we just need to make sure we're using these values as well. So in draw selected option, which now has an x and y argument, we can just pass x and y straight through into draw option and inside of draw option we can replace x pos with x and we'll make sure we get rid of the variable because we're not using it anymore and here we can do the y value plus the spacing times the index and we actually want to do index minus one here so that we start at the very top of our y value. So now inside of our pause state, I'll actually do two things here. We will say inside of menu.create, we'll create our main pause menu at 1010, and we will create our 
uh, secondary menu at uh, let's do 50 50 to start with and the other thing we'll do is actually pull out this separate this um, other menu here uh, just to make the code a bit more readable so we'll say local uh, confirm exit menu equals where are we all of this code here We'll take all of this and we'll put it here. And here we can just say uh, push confirm exit menu. So let's see, so now if we say exit, uh, we have no and yes. If we choose no, we go back. If we choose yes, we exit, and our menu is laid out uh, slightly more nicely than it was before. Okay, so the final thing we'll do in this episode, and I suspect it's gone a bit long, but I wanted to get the menu stack done this time so we can do something, uh, something fun next time. Uh, the final thing we'll do is we'll add a few sounds to our menu. So let's say select sound is equal to and I'll just check, but yep. So before this episode, I added a um, couple of sounds for menu. So I'll select sound, and just do love.audio, new source, the file name will be assets, sounds, Oops. assets, sounds, menu, select, dot wave, and it will be static and we'll also have a confirm sound menu confirm dot wave and this will be static as well And so now when we, inside of our next and previous functions, we'll say uh, select sound play. And inside of, oh, we want to do it in previous as well. And inside of confirm, we'll say confirm sound play. Let's just try that. And if we select something, we get a nice ping. There we go. And the last thing, very last thing, these currently sound a bit loud, so we'll just say select sound, set volume, so that should be a colon set volume and we'll do 0 0.6 and we'll also say confirm sound set volume 0 0.6 oh, that's a bit nicer and we might um, polish those sounds anyway in future so thank you very much for watching and uh, goodbye for now if you do have a couple of seconds uh, like or subscribe does go a long way to showing me that people are out there watching and appreciating the series. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.